Thank you so much. Good morning. It's an honor to be here. Um, let me go ahead and share my screen. Can everyone see? Can everyone see my slides? Looks good. Wonderful. Okay, so I'm happy to be here, and yes, I want to give an overview of, of the technology uh, workflows for 3D printing. Uh, now, in this first slide, uh, it's a very general workflow, and, and, and my colleagues will go much more in depth, but I want to give you some key terms here. Um, so, uh, 3D print usually starts as a 3D model, and it, it'll likely touch some 3D CAD modeling software at some point. Um, now, in the 3D modeling software, one may create the model, uh, which is a mathematical medical representation of a physical object, or they may acquire it through some other means such as 3D scanning or uh, photogrammetry. Um, but it'll go in this uh, 3D CAD modeling software, uh, get prepared um, and things like that, and then be exported to a 3D file. Now, some common 3D files um, to 3D printing are known as an STL file, uh, sometimes known as a standard triangle language file, or an OBJ file, an object file. And you'll see in this slide underneath, those are um, that file uh, represents the, um, the 3D object by describing its vertices. Um, that 3D file, once exported, it goes into something called a slicer software, which I'll talk about a bit more. And the slicer software knows about the specific um, 3D printer or a you know, mechanical CNC machine that you're using. And, um, and it converts that file into something called G-code, uh, which is also known as geometric code. Now you see this snippet, G-code is a series of commands that tells the specific machine that you're outputting for what to do, how to move the motors, how to heat the uh, filament um, and, and things like that to uh, cause the 3D printer in this case to generate a 3D print. So this is an overview. These are some key terms. Now, let's talk about 3D um, computer aided design or CAD software. So 3D CAD modeling is the process of developing a mathematical coordinate-based representation of any surface of an object in three dimensions via specialized software by manipulating edges, vertices, and polygons in a simulated 3D space. Um, so we have a couple uh, flavors of CAD software here. Um, on the upper left is a program called a Blender, which is an excellent open source CAD modeling software that's free. Uh, you can download that at blender.org. Uh, to the upper right, we have Maya. Maya is created by the Autodesk Corporation, and um, it's kind of a pioneering 3D software application. This one costs uh, quite a bit of money, but uh, for uh, uh, those in the academic space, you can get a free education license. Uh, SolidWorks um, is more known as a hard surface modeling software, and it's really geared towards um, uh, design for uh, digital fabrication, such as uh, 3D printing and CNC. And uh, down at the bottom, we have AutoCAD. Uh, there's some other ways to uh, generate 3D models. Um, 3D scanners, which use laser triangulation. Or photogrammetry, which uses a series of photographs, um, many, many photographs, to, uh, and then an algorithm analyzes those photographs and generates a 3D model in its texture. That those <coughs> outputs are then typically brought into a 3D CAD software, and the model is cleaned up, and then it can go into the pipeline uh, towards 3D printing or whatever processes one would want to do. Um, since I mentioned 3D scanning, I want to give a huge shout out to 3D.si.edu. They've done a tremendous effort on scanning their collection and making it available. This is an excellent resource for examining 3D models in their collection. You can also download them as um, uh, many different formats, OBJ, STL, and an augmented reality format known as USDZ. So if you're looking for models to examine, um, to study and play around with, this is an excellent Excellent resource, so I'm very happy to give a mention here. Um, now, 
once the model's prepared in your CAD software, it, it's, it needs to go to a, a 3D file format that represents uh, all the coordinates of the model. And so one of the really common files, and I'm going to get this more in depth in, in my later session, uh, is an STL file. STL is a file format created by the company 3D Systems. Um, it has several backronyms, such as standard triangle language or standard tessellation language. And the file format is supported by many software packages. And so it's widely used for rapid prototyping, 3D printing, and computer-aided manufacturing. Now, there's another common file format called OBJ or object file, and that's often used as well. Um, I have a session a little later today where I'm going to go into depth into both of these file formats, open them up in a text editor, and show them to you in a CAD program so you can see the differences and um, know more about these files. Uh, once the file is outputted as a 3D format, it goes into something called a slicing software. Uh, slicing software, the slicer, or also called slicing software, is a computer software used in the 3D <clears throat> printing process for the conversion of a 3D object model uh, to specific instructions for the printer. In particular, the conversion from a model in STL format or OBJ to printer commands is in something called the G-code format. Um, slicers software, there's a lot of different ones, um, but they have features specific uh, to the machine they're outputting for. Um, some of those features include infill density. Um, so you can see here on the left, you can set the infill density you know, printing out a 3D model at 100% density will take a long time, be quite heavy. And so for multiple reasons, you may uh, set the infill density to maybe 50, 25%, or in some cases, uh, very low. And a slicer will have options to do that. Uh, you may also need opt to use support materials. In this case, we have a raft. Um, in a lot of 3D printers, it's important to, you know, put a mechanism or an apparatus in the 3D print where it doesn't slide around on the bed where it sticks to the bed. And so a raft um, is sometimes used for that. A raft is not part of the actual 3D model, but some extra layers underneath to keep it securely in place on the print bed. Uh, another mechanism is called a brim. That's a little different than a raft and, it, and it's a very thin layer of material that surrounds the actual 3D model so it doesn't slide around. Um, and then we also have supports. So uh, many slicers can generate support structures. And these are, well, it's a physical object that you're printing. Um, and so if you're printing it floating in space, you know, you have to have something to support it uh, so that you can build up to the actual 3D model. These are some examples of supports. Uh, that could be generated. And then um, in post-processing, you would break them off and, and clean them off. Uh, slicers also have a number of different options, such as layer height, uh, thickness of the walls, uh, top and bottom layer thickness. Again, we have the infill. This one's set at 20%. And the pattern can change to be cubic, triangular, many different options. Um, this will be specific to the uh, printing temperature of the material. Uh, different um, filaments, substrates are going to have different printing temperatures, and you can adjust those in your slicer, uh, as well as the speed of the print head, um, and some traveling options, cooling options based on your substrate. And down here, we have um, options for support. Um, uh, of note, this is a slicer called Kira. Uh, it's free to download and play around with, even if you don't have a 3D printer. Um, so I want to, it's called a slicer because it, it, you know, it generates a bunch of slices or layers um, that's going to go to the machine you're printing in. So here's just a quick video of a vi visualization in the slicer I've been using. Um, that shows the layers. of how it'd be printed.
Okay, so the slicer, once you've you know um, brought your STL OBJ or 3D file format into the slicer, um, added options uh, such as support materials, um, uh, infill, uh, all of those options, then you would uh, typically output G code. So G code is also known as RS274. It's the most widely used computer numerically controlled programming language. It's used mainly in computer aided manufacturing to control automated machine tools and has many variants or flavors. And we'll talk about that a little more in depth later. Uh, G code instructions are provided to a machine controller, industrial computer, that tells the motors where to move, how fast to move, and what path to follow. And in this image, I have a um, uh, an image of the uh, reference index for the Marlin flavor of G code. And, and you can see, uh, you can go through, and it's a reference of all the commands um, that you might find in this particular flavor of G code uh, that tells, you know, the, the motors how to move the, the filament to retract, et cetera. I'll share that link as well. And here is just an image of some commented G code. And you can see it's a series of commands. Um, this G code is commented, and I'm going to show you how you can generate comments for your own G code uh, in my second session. And so thank you.